everyone. It's Coach Vicki, and I want to welcome you to another episode of Optimal Life Balance with Coach Vicki, where you take charge of your life and learn to have fun along the way. Today, we're going to go a little bit into purpose. What is your God-given purpose in your life, and how to find out what it actually is? Um, you know, you may be thinking, why am I here, or what is the point? Do I make a difference? Does it even matter what I do? Uh, for it. And the thing is, is it is. These are important questions, and I want to let you know there is a difference. You make a difference. God made you for a reason. And even if you don't know what it is yet, there's not a reason that you can't find out on there. The thing is, is when we get up every day, we are doing our purpose. Just by getting up, we are here for a reason. So when the good news is that God does have the answers to that, and he reveals it in his word, but even just if we open up our eyes to what's around us, sometimes we don't look at what's right in front of us as our purpose or our um, ability to realize that we are doing what we want to do. But if you, oops, I'm sorry, if you don't know what your purpose is, anything else, we're going to kind of go over a few things to ask to see if you can feel what is your reason for what you're doing. There are 12 different, you know, different things. We're just going to go over a few today uh, for it, but God has a plan for you and your purpose. And if you're not sure what that is, you may want to just ask him, sit back and relax and think, but really kind of start honing into what gives you passion inside. What would you do if you didn't have to work? Um, what they would, if you weren't getting paid, you enjoy doing it. Um, he had a purpose even before we were born, you know, to where we should be in our path. Um, God has been working to prepare us for the specific things. And we, that is where we go through seasons in our life. And I know for myself, I've gone through quite a few different seasons in the last probably it's a 2015, 16 uh, type of an idea and more before that too, but really since I found, um, Christ in the 2015, when I asked that I'm just tired of being, not knowing my purpose and not having feel like I was worthy of anything. And when I went and asked him for that, he helped me realize that I am not perfect, but I made perfectly uh, for that and that I have a purpose. And I had to go through the journey that I've gone through of getting a healthier, learning to like myself, learning to love myself, learning to love God and realize he takes me for who I am. But then also learning to start shifting my mindset about things and how I looked at stuff and listened to music and what I did in life to ensure I was starting to align with what he wanted for me. Am I perfect? No. And that's what we're just saying. I I make wrong turns. Um, I make misdirections, but my direction in God has never changed. On that, I just need to learn to stay on the path. But that's okay. And that's why he loves you. And but your whole life, you have purposes throughout your life. You don't have one purpose and one purpose only. In each season, you may be a purpose in somebody's life that comes into your life for a short period of time that you help them through something that is your purpose at that time your purpose of having your kids and raising your family that's your purpose in that season now what is your purpose say you've gone through that you've taken care of the kids and the family and now it's your purpose is for you for you to start pouring into yourself and finding out who you are uh, for it, and then where you want to go. God is committed to fulfill you with your purpose if you're open to it. You can't have a wall up and expect God to be able to help you if you don't need him. He will give you the tools and things and the ability of doing what needs to be done, but you got to take the effort and believe that it is in you and you have a purpose for that. Um, he... God does not give you a purpose that doesn't change with your situations or trend, trend to your feelings. He does what's purposely for you. So don't compare yourself to somebody else's journey and their purpose. 
And I know that's the hardest thing for us to um, not do is we kind of look at social media is a good point of it. And we see how all these other people are being more successful. They have a bigger family. They have this love. That is their journey. First of all, you don't know how what's going behind the camera, but that is their journey, their purpose. Embrace what yours is. And when you're going through those different um, challenges that you may be going through, realize that instead of taking that this has happened to me, this is happening for me, what am I supposed to learn out of it? What am I supposed to be able to get out of this? What is the purpose that I'm going through this? And is it to maybe a one-time turnaround and help put my hand back and help somebody else through the same thing? When we also think of God wants us to look at his word and discover the path through him, um, I have a hard time doing this. And it is, you know, just me uh, for it. But I don't, I have a hard time sometimes reading the Bible and understanding what's there. But that doesn't mean I don't believe in God and believe what his words are. I just try to find different avenues of listening things to more because it's how I learn. And we've talked about that before, that if you're going to start changing and building habits, you need to learn how you learn to adopt it so that it works for you. And if you haven't seen an episode, I think I have one back. If not, is what this is all things I teach in my coaching program that I would love to go into more depth with you on how we could start making those changes. And it's an evolution of changes. You'll never hit an end because then the only time you hit an end is when you're not breathing no more. Um, God is wise in his insight of the people that he puts in front of us, understanding what we can handle. You know, there's a phrase, anything else that God only gives you what you can handle, but it's not, you know, helps anything else. But what it is, is he gives you what he helps you um, handle what you are given on that. You know, you sometimes say, I was like, can, I can't handle this anymore, God. It's like, yes, you can. Just ask me for help and I'm here for you. Um, the purpose of um, suffering, revealing that sometimes, like you said, it is not always going to be perfect. But at the end, I've always found everything I've gone through while I was going through it was not maybe easy or something I wanted to. And I kept asking, can we just kind of skip this part on there? But when I've been on the other side of it, I realized how much he has given to me and what it was for and how much I needed that. And that is the hardest part for you to realize to it. Um, but what we want to kind of just go through is when you're asking God, are you asked, thanking him for what you have? You know, thank you for what you've given me. Thank you for the talents that you've given me, the drive that you've given me, the clarity that you're giving me. And if I'm not clear or I'm not doing, help me figure out what it is. And there's a few questions you can ask yourself to kind of get you to what is your purpose? What is your God-given purpose? And I'm going to go through them pretty quick. Just going to go through a few of the different questions is on there. But what activities have been most fulfilling in your life that bring you joy? Um, what is stuff you like doing? And it may, and I just want to, let's back up two steps here a second. Your purpose does not have to be your job. Uh, for it, if you're doing your job as your purpose, that's even better. But your purpose does not have to be what you do as your career. Your purpose is what you're here for. Your purpose may be the volunteering end of what you're doing or the church end or raising your family end. Um, and it could be your job. You know, so when people think, what well, I'm not doing my purpose, that doesn't have to be a nine to five or whatever kind of job is, is your purpose. You may have a bigger purpose outside of your job. So what does give you joy? Is it volunteering and helping kids in the foster systems? Is it painting and seeing art through that and through the, your eyes and vision? And when somebody sees what you've done, the joy it gives them, that it gives you your purpose and passion. Um, do you feel like you're, there's no zone, um, you're in the zone or it's your best when you're doing it? When it's something that you can just do for hours and time goes by and you don't even notice it because you're just so passionate about doing that. Is it writing a book or 
painting or drawing or even just passion of reading or going for out in nature and planting a new garden. What is it that gives you that? God has, can clearly reveal in his words what is our purpose when we ask. What um, what would you do to spend um, to spend more time doing? What would you like to be doing? What is priority to you if you didn't have no obstacles in your life with it else? And even with those obstacles, what is something you try to do no matter what? You want to make sure you can do it. Uh, what activities come natural to you? To me, I'm more creative. Um, I love interacting and um, teaching and coaching. It's something when I was in retail for 30 something years that I was a manager and I just a trainer. I helped and empower when new management came in for the area. I would train them in my store for a week or two, get them familiar with the stuff and then send them to their store and then help, you know, be a, a liaison for them. But when I, even with my staff in my store, when we were doing displays that I worked retail on that, Everyone, we were, you know, we did a whole big floor move. Everyone's moving and we we're doing a lot of displays. And it's like, here, here's the stuff. Go be creative. These are the basic guidelines you have to do. Do what comes up with what you see to come together for it. And the thing is, is when I did that is each person could do the same exact product and have a totally different layout of how they did it. And none of it was wrong. It was what they saw in their creative eye to be it. And when you bring out that empowerment in somebody to realize what they have and how to bring it out, that is what you want to really start to see. The other thing you could always do is ask people, what do you see me good at? What do, um, do you see my talents at? Or what do people come to you for? Do they come to you for advice or when they have something creative to do? Um, what talents has God given you? I, I always think, I said, well, I don't have really any talents. I'm not athletic. I'm not anything else. But my talents aren't that. My talents are more putting things together and the creativity and colors and um, displays and um, organization and checklists. That's my talent. So when I start to realize what it is, then I could start to think what I'm going to start doing to pursue that talent. Um, do you have resources that you can? And if not, if you're realizing this is something you want to do, and if it's maybe a career change or just something you want to pass it, maybe start doing research and figuring what can you do? Can I make a living or out of that passion on there? Can I start, how can I start giving back using my passion. Um, what do you really want to get out of life? What legacy do you want to leave? And to me, that is a big thing on there. And it came, it comes down to when I guess when my mom's funeral, we had read the poem, The Dash. And if you've ever heard of it, and I might've mentioned it before once on there, but The Dash is that little line between the day you were born and the day you die. That represents your life. What do you want that dash to say about you? Do you want to say that dash to say that she worked all the time? She didn't have fun. She was sad. What do you want that dash to say that she pursued her passion? She enjoyed life. She had hard times and stuff like that, but she learned to embrace them and learn from them. So you designate that dash. God has the power to, has that all planned, but you designate to follow the proper dash or go for your off costs and make your own dash on it. But it is you're never too late to change your dash. If you're not liking how life has been or how you've been doing things or where you are, it's never too late to change on it, not no age, even 80 years old, or if you're 60 years old, or even if you're 20 years old and you didn't like how you, some things happened to you in your life, you can change it. The first thing you need to do is stop and look inside of yourself and look up to God. And if you are really seriously ready to make those changes, he will put those paths in front of you 
to have to do, but you got to remember, you've got to meet them. You can't, you know, there's the full phrase, and it's like, you know, I want to scout all the skin, win the lottery. Let's give me the lottery numbers. Let me win the lottery. Uh, that the thing you ask, you said, well, I would have if you played on that. Did you even ever play the lottery? So how am I going to give you the winning numbers if you never played? So you got to do your part too with that. And just remembering that when you cry out, you know, this um, Psalms 57 two, I cry out to God's most high, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. When you ask him, what is it? And you look into yourself, what can I do? That is when you start pursuing. Now you may go down one path and realize this is not really what I want to do. I'm going to shift a little bit more here or go back this way. And I've done that myself, you know, on who I want to help, what I want to do. And I've gotten, it kind of just had a recent shift again to go back to, what has helped me through my journey, and that is my belief in him, my belief that I've learned to love myself again, and just trusting that I can do it, you know. Um, so I want you to take all of this and think. Go find a quiet place, listen to some worship music, or whatever it is that you need to do to relax. Go walk on the beach. And really just reflect, are you doing what you want to do? Are you doing what God's called you to do or what gives you passion inside? Passion is something, that, remember, you're not going to find feel um, find passion. It is something that finds you you feel. But you have to pursue it at the same time. I know it's a catch-22 in there. But it's type of an idea. If you're going to sit back and think it's just going to come by, you know, sitting on the TV and watching eating bomb moms, you think that new job's going to come. It's not. You have to take the steps to get out there and do what's right. And if that job that you thought was the right one and wasn't, then go for the next one. Maybe there was a reason you didn't know and that's okay. What I was, so I want you to kind of do is to um, take a piece of paper, start listing what are things that you really find that are your talents, your passion, that gives you, when you think about it, you're like, I like doing it, puts a smile on your face, put your shoulder backs when doing it, talking about it, and start looking at that every day and seeing, am I doing these things? Can I start doing more of this? Is this something I'm supposed to be doing in this season in my life? Um, sometimes we have to go through seasons and that that passion gets put somewhat on the back burner because we got to focus in on something else. But don't ever forget about that passion. Don't let it ever get buried on that. It may just be on simmer, but don't let it ever be turned off. And if it is, you can reunite it. So with that being said, I just want to say thank you very much and have a blessed and fun day. Until I see you again on another episode, just remember you are designed for a purpose and God has one for you. Thanks.